Yes, there are um, basically there are two types of thesis you can write. It's the paper-based or the monographic. And I say to my uh, students, only paper-based is allowed um, because papers, scientific papers, is the tool we're using in the scientific world to communicate what we're doing. So we need to learn that. And it's not a trivial task to do it, so we need to learn how to write it. And a lot of the time we, in, in a PhD program is really uh, linked to how to write uh, good scientific papers. Um, and when it comes to that, uh, that task, uh, I say clearly, all papers should be um, with the supervisor as a co-author. Because uh, the supervisor takes the responsibility that the international high level is uh, achieved. And then he or she has to be a co-author. Taking full responsibility, you can have uh, co-authors co from uh, colleagues and from other institutions and even students, but you have to take the full responsibility that the paper has the required level, the international peer-reviewed journal level. The candidate can be the first author, but you should always be there as a, a co-author, and that also gives you the credit for the actual work you are doing. That is fair. And of course, you should aim at uh, some, uh, at least one journal papers in the, in, in the thesis. Uh, it could be more, it should be more, but uh, one at minimum. And also, you could have papers in the in scientific uh, conference proceedings. But the key is to get some journal papers and also being accepted as early as possible in your in the work. So we come to the paper process and you invite the candidate to come up with some ideas about areas, areas of, of interest. And also next then try to specify some research topics and at the end what is the key contribution of your work in one or maybe two sentences. And this is not, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to get some sort of response on what is the interest areas. But when it comes to contribution, scientific contribution is not easy. And you can't expect that the candidate is able to deliver um, sort of scientific contribution statement at this stage. This person is on a master, master plus level, and you can't expect that he's able to, or she is able to deliver at this international research level. So you have to, at a certain stage, to uh, uh, do the job and deliver what is the scientific contribution of the work. That's the normal situation. Of course, there are exceptions. The candidate would normally have two week basis to be able to do this. But he or she should learn how this works. So we go on with the invitation process for title, abstract, and main section headings. And uh, you allow for many iterations and stimulate the candidate to come up with sort of first version, if it's title or abstract. And then you point to sort of good features and formulations, uh, what, is, what are the poor ones. Check every word and sentence. Point to lack of precision, uh, logical problems, clarity um, problems, lack of flow, etc. And do not prevent do not present too early a, a solution, but let the student work hard and improve and improve. But at a certain stage, you say, look at this, this can be done in this way, and you come up with some elegant solution. Hopefully the student will learn from that to see uh, a good way of solving the issues that you have been discussing. And the key point in this uh, process is to sort of be really clear on that there's only one 
uh, mountain to climb, using this metaphor for the contribution. There's only one contribution, and that is something that you have to sort of specify in one sentence, the key contribution. And then next, when that is clear, you have to be loyal to this task. And that's difficult for a lot of PhD students. They say this and this, but if it's not linked to this mountain, it's really not, should not be there. It should be removed from the uh, paper. So you do the same for introduction and invite the candidate to, to take part in that. And the same with the following uh, sections and, and the full draft. Going in the same way, you're following up uh, and at the end you take the full responsibility and get the paper on the right level. And then there's a lot of polishing, proofreading and of course references has to be uh, made uh, ready. And you're ready for submission of the paper. And then you come into the, uh, some sort of dedication of possible reviewers. And of course, you as supervisor has to be involved in that, using also your international network of, of scientists that you work with. And the candidate will see um, how this process works. And in general, you as supervisor need to be informed uh, and uh, sort of uh, taking uh, part in all uh, sort of initiatives that the candidates or contact that the candidate have has with external environments. Uh, I, I'm sometimes I'm really surprised to, to get some sort of uh, invitations from the PhD students to, to do this and this, being you know, even an opponent. It's coming from the student, I would like it to be coming from uh, the uh, supervisors, not the students. So we get the paper back and, and uh, maybe it's a revision of the paper and you have to learn the candidate how to do that. That's also very challenging. Uh, show the candidate some examples on how you do that kind of revision, how you do writing the feedback to review his comments. Uh, you try to let the uh, candidate uh, make some attempts to, to write this, uh, both the revision and the feedback to reviewers comments. And certainly trying to find that balance between being confident, I mean, you believe in something that you have written, at the same time being humble, and uh, sort of uh, meeting the comments from the reviewers. This is of course a challenge to find that kind of balance, but you need to see an experienced person do it. And so, um, uh, of course, this work um, cannot be done by the uh, candidate alone. You, as a supervisor, really have to do much of this work uh, because you have the experience to be able to find that balance between confidence and humbleness in revising your, your paper and bring it to a satisfactory equality level. That means a huge involvement from the supervisor. And by this kind of revision, also the candidate would see how the scientific process work, what science actually mean, and the degree of subjectivity that's really linked to this, this uh, the scientific process. This is an uh, interesting observation for a lot of candidates uh, to see that. Many have a quite a naive perspective on what science is. Science is. So uh, when you have a paper-based uh, uh, PSD uh, thesis, you have to write an introduction, sort of trying to uh, frame everything and, and put it into a context. And uh, uh, this is there were different sort of requirements from different schools and universities on how to do that. And of course, you have to meet them. But in general, I would say that this introduction is not so interesting. Um, because it was, if it was interesting, you should publish it in a paper. Um, and uh, I think that uh, it's often sort of written at the end. You state some objectives for the whole work that is sort of matching what you've actually done. But the paper process cannot be planned in advance so that you, you write first the objectives and then you are going to do the work to meet these objectives. There's a lot of 
uncertainties and wildness in this research process. You cannot program everything in advance. So you write the app. The result is that you write the objectives at the end, and then uh, the, the text sort of following that up, and it doesn't actually make sense, doesn't give very much. Uh, so overall, I think the focus should be on the papers, but of course, writing sufficient on this introduction to meet the requirements from the uh, uh, university uh, and your department. So we come to the courses, and um, what should I say about that? Yeah, it's sort of, I think that the key is to have maybe one course on the fundamentals, the main ideas and principles that is for the scientific field that this candidate belongs to. Um, and then you should have a course type that really is challenging the candidate. Um, expect the researcher's perspective, not the master level uh, presentations. I mean, the candidate is presenting um, uh, in, in, a, in a sort of a, in a classroom uh, on different topics, and you're expecting a research perspective. That means sort of that you're able to, the candidate is able to um, summarize and, and provide different perspectives on the issues being discussed. Um, uh, reflect on this and also provide some own comments to it. This is really, I see from my experience, very difficult for the candidates, but that's the level we expect. It's so, uh, we should not, I would not like to see any kind of sort of this is the solution, one perspective, uh, which is often the case on a lower level uh, of, of uh, training. Okay, and, and sometimes there are uh, uh, courses on more applied topics, but for me that's not so important because it's linked to your thesis anyway, and you have to learn what is needed uh, on these topics anyway, uh, independent of the course. But the key is the fundamentals. It should be uh, really uh, strong for your work. Okay, this is to other scientific environments. It's next on, on the list here. And I think this is, uh, could be very useful uh, for many candidates um, to come into other environments, scientific environments, and learn from them. And not only your, uh, not only the, the supervisors from own university, but uh, also be. Uh, I think it's not really working so well for all. Uh, for the good students, for the good candidates, it works fine, but not necessarily for all. And it's, of course, you should use your your scientific. Uh, uh, links that you have with other institutions and uh, uh, researchers, and three to six months is, is normally uh, enough. And the supervisor would actually, uh, of course, uh, lead this process of establishing contact for the PhD candidates, not the students. Okay, presentation at work at conferences, which I think is extremely important, uh, part of the training program. And I often ask the students before uh, we start on this, uh, what is your goal? Is it to write, uh, sorry, to present a brilliant talk or is it just to do it, finishing, um, do the minimum? And with that, I mean, um, I, I think that uh, overall, 95%, uh, uh, most at least, most uh, close to 100% is actually saying, Yes, we would like to have a brilliant talk. That's, that's great. Uh, but then you are, have to be ready for a tough uh, uh, sort of uh, planning and tough work to be ready. And that they are. And to have a, have a talk that is really with a clear message, that's interesting to listen to. And it should not be all inclusive, but cover aspects that are really interesting um, for the uh, audience. Then you have to start very early, let's say one month before the presentation. You indicate, you invite the ca candidate again to make a draft presentation, present the work. And you are giving feedback on every, every detail about strengths and weaknesses, lack of precision, every, every word that is being said, basically. And a lot of iterations, and you should see too that there is no pressure on time. 
what you're saying is understandable, so you reduce the amount of things that you would like to say, but make it understandable. Illustrations, not too many, too much text, of course, not the boring uh, PowerPoint type of uh, standard text. And of course, no manus, manus allowed for when you speak as a candidate uh, and so forth. Um, yeah, and you have many trial presentations with you present and uh, having this dialogue and also with other colleagues and PhD students and also with questions and answers uh, sort of being uh, taking place. And you have done so good planning. So when the candidate comes to um, on the stage, he or she can be free and really present. And then that involves some risk, but not so much risk because you are so well prepared. So when you have a talk, the candidate has the has a talk, um, he or she need to take full responsibility. Questions should be answered by the candidate, not by the supervisor. It's quite embarrassing sometimes when uh, we see that the, the, the people in the audience are actually uh, addressing the issues to the uh, supervisor, which um, feel really bad for the candidate. And uh, the questions and answers uh, part is often uh, really uh, sort of challenging for, for the candidate. And there should be a lot of work on, on simulating and training the candidate for that part. Uh, also, you need to provide some, some guidance and generic tools how to deal with these questions and answers. For example, first of all, change your mindset if you feel it's a problem with these questions. Happy that people are asking you at all. And if you don't understand what this person is saying, don't desperately try to get this uh, really clear. Just suggest a chat uh, in the break after talk, etc., etc. A lot of these sort of good advices. Okay, then we come to defense of your thesis. And that is actually, as for a talk at the conference, basically the same thing. Uh, need to be very well uh, sort of uh, prepared. Uh, should be a brilliant talk at this uh, defense. And this kind of uh, dialogue is the same as the question and answer. And you need to find as a candidate this kind of balance between being confident and humble. Confident because you're going to defend your work, at the same time you're humble because these opponents have a lot of insights uh, and of course have some valid points normally. Okay, uh, some few words about the committee. Um, um, the, I saw a cartoon some uh, time back, we had some prototypes of, of committee members. The guru, well, he was only focusing on, on cookies. Cookies, the adversary is a person that's really in opposition to the, uh, the supervisor, uh, uh, have some different uh, perspectives. Uh, so it's always sort of negative uh, to the supervisor's uh, perspectives. And the straw man woman is not really having any views himself or self uh, really. It's sort of uh, 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 like, is sort of happy with everything. An assistant professor just sort of uh, finishing with his or her work on PhD level and trying to behave a little better than he or she is. Now, in the committee, um, you should of course not have people like uh, this adversary should not be there at all. Um, and you also need to sort of uh, make it clear for the candidate that these, these people are not really looking into all details of the thesis, but often linked to their own topics, the, the favorite topics that they have. Uh, so you need to be well prepared for that. Sometimes the supervisor is a part of the committee, sometimes not. Uh, but the planning of who will be a member of the committee is, of course, extremely important. And um, as, and, and the, 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 the problem is that there are different schools and pillars for the work uh, we are doing. And, uh, and I would say that if my goal would have been to reject a thesis, I could have done that easily for most theses uh, by evaluating it on the basis of wrong pillars. If the work is in sort of basically in B and I 
have a perspective from A, criticizing it from perspective A, it would be difficult to sort of, uh, sort of justify the work. Or we have a lot of problems because A, a has some pers perspectives that is different than B, and it will be a problem for the candidate. So the implications of this is that the thesis has to be evaluated on the basis of the proper uh, perspectives to the pillars of the environment that the candidates actually uh, belong to. And uh, a rejection, a lot of problems is often founded that you are not really accepting that these are the perspectives, uh, the basis, the pillars for this, uh, this candidate. Is, uh, you can have some problem within sort of this uh, perspective, but normally the problems are really linked to that you have a completely different sort of uh, way of looking at the work. And the third one um, of implications, this kind of idea that the uh, committee is actually coming up with some sort of objective evalu evaluation of the candidate is really naive. We all have some perspectives that we are judging, evaluating the work from. And they are certainly not objective. Other issues that I would like to mention at the end here is that um, the, sometimes I come up an issue about external work for the candidate. Um, that should, I mean, a job uh, in, in the industry, or whatever, is combined with this PhD. I say no, that's really difficult, should be avoided, because uh, PhD, writing a PhD thesis is so hard work, it has to be fully, really uh, full focus. I involved some, in, uh, to some extent, in, in teaching just a little, because that's part of the training in becoming able to present work at scientific conferences and defending your thesis. So we have looked into all of these uh, activities and we can ask then what then? Uh, some get uh, postdoc positions, some go to industry agency, some become uh, assistant professor and, and so forth. And as I said in the beginning, um, hopefully the candidates has sort of moved from the plus master level up to a higher level and approaching the international research level. We can't expect that for all the candidates, but you have got, if the supervision has been good and you are a talented person uh, as a candidate, um, there is a platform that is good for you to further develop, take part in the research environments and writing papers and having scientific talks and so forth. Thank you.